Good morning YouTube, Arizona RE here, up for a lovely ride in the Arizona springtime desert. I got a jacket on this morning, but uh, it was about 52 degrees when I took off this morning, but it's supposed to get up to 89 today, and that is a pretty big temperature swing, so jackets with liners and layers, and those are a good thing this time of year. An interesting topic has sort of resurfaced uh, in the circle of motovloggers that I watch. I know Tim Kreitz uh, has covered this recently. Uh, so is Calm Biker, uh, Skeggy Cruiser, a handful of others. And basically it's about road rage. Road raging on a motorcycle specifically. And you know, I think, uh, I also think Pretty sure Sam Smith covered this a while back. I, I believe the vlog was called "We Could Do Better." I, part of that was it had to do with uh, motorcycle riders just really, maybe not even riding beyond their own abilities, but riding a, beyond the abilities of other drivers to recognize them, to see them in a safe manner. But I digress. Uh, and, and speaking of road rage, road rage incidents. Uh, I witnessed one with uh, Hepcat Harley, uh, where Hepcat was, uh, I'll go ahead and post a link to the video in case you're one of my subscribers that, that hasn't seen it, but you know, Hepcat was very wisely, uh, was waiting for this narrow alleyway to clear and, and uh, waiting for the light to change, he didn't want to be stuck in the middle of the alley when oncoming traffic came through and the driver behind him in a van got really really irate and uh, went ahead and passed him so as Hebcat was filtering back up to the front uh, you know Hebcat kind of gave him what for like hey you dummy just trying to wait for traffic uh, I don't think it was much more colorful than that either it certainly didn't warrant the response he ended up getting from this guy who at the very next traffic light jumps out of the vehicle and comes up and gets right in Hepcat's face and of course if you're a motorcycle rider um, I, I don't care how big bad and tough you are it's something something tells me Mr. Hepcat is a fairly formidable guy when he's on two feet and not on two wheels but every single one of us knows if you ride a motorcycle you are more vulnerable than anybody out there I'm not just talking about from oncoming traffic, but if a, if a pedestrian wants to come up and push you over on that motorcycle, it's going to happen. And it doesn't matter how big, bad, and strong you are, it's going to happen. And you could be pinned under it, or, um, you know, you, you, you could do something stupid and try to stop the bike from going over and end up breaking an ankle or twisting a knee or something like that. And God forbid if your knees already aren't in good shape. So when it comes to a confrontation like that, you really don't have a choice. You either need to bug out or try to de-escalate the situation. Uh, Hepcat chose to de-escalate the situation, and I applaud him for that. Uh, I've seen, I've seen it on the sides of the road. I've seen it going down. Uh, road ragers will push each other off of motorcycles. They'll jump on each other's cars, really putting themselves at risk just throwing their bike down for the sake of, of getting into a fight with someone over a, a traffic dispute. That seems kind of stupid to me. Um, but I also know I've, I've been pretty enraged by other drivers on the road. Of that there is no doubt. But road ragers and fellas, I, I, uh, I appeal to you, if you ride a motorcycle, just don't bother. Just don't bother. Man, if you can't get away, you're just making yourself vulnerable. And it really doesn't matter how much of a Billy Badass you think you are. You may, you may be a, a Royce Gracie Jiu Jitsu champion. It doesn't matter. When you've got a 500 pound weight that you're balancing between your legs, and I'm not talking about the size of your balls, uh, Someone can knock you over quicker than anything. And then what are you going to be concerned about? you got a 500-pound bike resting on one of your legs, unless you're quick enough to get off of it. 
but even that, just dismounting your bike can appear to be an escalation. Um, what they call a pre-violent indicator. So in other words, if a driver decided to get out of his car, hang his head out the window and bitch at you, even though you may be dismounting your bike for safety because you're afraid this guy's going to attack you, it may appear to them that you are dismounting your bike for the purpose of causing them harm. So now who's justified in whatever actions they take? So the bottom line is, guys, for a traffic violation, give them the horn, give them a rev bomb, shake your head in disgust, and then move on. On a motorcycle, I'm a lot calmer uh, than I am in a car. It's amazing how that happens. But, uh, yeah, I've seen some of the moto vloggers online who will pull up to an intersection getting screaming and shouting matches with people. I just, uh, I don't get it. I, I seem to recall a, uh, a fairly bad road rage incident where there was some road raging going on. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Now look, I'm going to go ahead and put the onus where it belongs, guys. Uh, this was a motorcycle club, if I remember right. It was over in New York somewhere. And uh, I'm trying to recall it to the best I can. I did not research it before I came out for this ride this morning. It's just a topic that sort of popped in my brain because so many other motor vloggers have been carrying it. Um, but at any rate, the, um, the motorcycle club, or gang, or whatever you want to call them, was basically tearing down the interstates and tearing down the highways, doing wheelies, blocking off traffic so that the motorcycles could do their stunts or races and things like that. And uh, a family guy, you know, a, a guy in an SUV with his wife and kids in the car, is derping along, uh, does something that the motorcycle guys don't like. So then the motorcycle guys decide to start harassing him, chasing him down. So what does he do? He gets scared. He gives it the gas. I mean, what are you going to do if you have 30 angry people chasing you down and you've got your wife and kids in the car? You're going to run. You're going to run or you're going to pull out a gun. If you're in Arizona, he would have pulled out a gun. Simple as that. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. There are probably more guns in this state than there all are all in the entire uh, New England area. And I say that meaning uh, legally owned firearms. I'm not counting the illegally owned ones. If that happened in Arizona, uh, the guy in the SUV would have pulled out a gun long before uh, he got yanked out of the car and beaten to a pulp. But these people chased him, and I want to say it was for dozens of miles. They chased him, and then they blocked him off at one point, and he was certain they were going to pull him out of the car and do him or his family harm. So he ran over one of them, ran over the motorcycle and everything. And the video that was captioned and put on television seemed like it was uh, it was pretty one-sided. Like, oh, you know, this guy just hates motorcycle riders and, and trounced on the opportunity to run over this bike. But... I think once it all played out, it was it was fairly obvious that that uh, road rage got the better of both the motorcycle crew and the driver of that SUV. But man, it should never have escalated like it did. So the SUV rider pissed you off, let it go. But in that environment with those guys and uh, you know that motorcycle club environment, uh, the motorcycle gang environment, where they're all already out there doing illegal activity. And uh, they all got to prove to each other who has a bigger manhood, and they're going to be relentless in it. So they just had to get up there and put the fear of God into them. Well, when you put the fear into someone, one of two things is going to happen. Fight or flight. Fight or flight. You scare someone bad enough, you're going to get that reaction out of them. It's either fight or flight. And let me tell you something. If someone's going to bother to stop and fight a group of 30, then you better believe there's probably some guns on board. Now, he opted not to fight. He probably made a bad decision with, uh, with engaging in road rage. So, not saying he's without fault. He definitely made a bad decision. And then that bad decision was made worse 
by the series of bad decisions that followed on both parties. But, uh, man, it just never needed to get that far. So my advice to any and everybody is, if you're prone to road rage in a car, and you get on a motorcycle and you feel like you're coming into a road rage incident, take the next opportunity to pull over, unbuckle your helmet, take it off, take one huge deep breath, and slowly let it out. And by the time you've done all that, road rage incident is long over. And the opportunity for disaster is long over. And it may take you a few minutes to make that happen, but by golly, uh, that's a lot better scenario than getting into a shootout or fist of cuffs, fighting somebody. Just imagine, with this bike between your legs, trying to fight somebody who's already solidly on two feet and may, be a ve may very well be a capable fighter themselves. So, unless you're Jackie Chan and can keep the bike balanced while you're using it like a pommel horse and kicking everybody uh, Olympic style, I would say you probably need to uh, abstain from those activities where you want to try and fight someone while you're straddling a bike. So that's that's my recommendation in that regard. So anyway, leave the road raging to the cagers. Try not to give them a reason to rage. Because uh, when it comes down to it, it's a lug nut test, fellas. It's the lug nut test. That's ultimately what it comes down to, right? Does everybody know what the lug nut test is? Whatever vehicle has the most lug nuts wins. So anyway, that's my lecture and that's my little bit on it. Just stay away from it. Back off, take a deep breath, and get point A to point B. Enjoy as much of it as you can. And uh, guess what, folks? I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> That's all for me. Bye-bye.